Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey guys, this is Carl the Shark Shickert, and welcome to our webinar. Today, me and Chase are going to be going over some really cool stuff. Um, we're going to be talking about how we broke into the industry. We're calling it a $668,925 launch. The numbers are actually greater now because we did do a webinar yesterday, so I would say we're over 670000 at this point. Um, but those numbers keep building, and me and Chase did a launch uh, about how long ago? About four months ago now, and uh, basically we had to strategize this whole thing. We had to really put our heads down and, and talk about it. We even um, talked about it at our mastermind, and we really just put together what I would say is one of the best plans I've seen, and then executed one of the best plans that I've seen. And so I wanted to make sure that we could actually uh, invite people that are on our list, some of our customers, so that way they can learn exactly how we did this. I think the launch model is something that everybody could learn from, regardless of what industry you're in, from uh, e, you know, doing um, e-commerce or selling digital products or selling membership products. Whatever you might be in, uh, this will definitely, definitely help you get information. On top of that, we invited all of our JVs because we sort of used the case study as a promise, a future promise to them that uh, as a sort of a lead magnet so you guys would actually join our list and that way we could send you our JV information uh, so that way hopefully we could make a, a connection with you and a future partnership with you. And so Chase and I, um, we got, just so you guys get a little backstory, and I've got Chase here, but just to give you guys a little backstory about us and kind of how we met, uh, me and Chase were actually part of Chris Records, uh, it's called the Seven Figure Traffic Academy. And uh, Chase and I uh, are in his mastermind, and basically because of that mastermind uh, was the beginning and the start of the Shopify app. And that, you know, both of us being, uh, were actually both had developed software before, but Chase came in there and he, uh, we had a lot of people in there that were doing e a lot of people like uh, um, Peter Chang Jr. and uh, Lawrence Aponte, uh, Michael Crouch, we had a lot of other people in there that um, were doing well in e -com. and so, and, and so Chase and I both, we were very interested in the industry and Chase was just starting to get into it and myself and my wife Ikumi was just starting to get into it and um, so Chase started kind of pulling everybody about the software itself, like before he built the software, before he even came up with the name, before it was even a baby. Uh, the conception of it was basically uh, just ask a bunch of people what are their pain points, what are some of the things that you're struggling with, and he started thinking about solutions and stuff like that. So he actually built a prototype or a, a beta version of Shopify app, gave access to everybody in the um, in the Seven Figure Traffic Academy. Um, people started loving it. Gave access to Chris Record. Chris Record would start doing webinars. And that little e-packet identifier was popping up on a screen and he was constantly getting people saying, because I worked with Chris and he was getting people in his webinar saying, what is that? What the heck is that? People would notice it because they'd never seen it before. And uh, and it got to the point where Chris put together a bonus for uh, some software or something that he was he was doing a promo for. He called up Chase and said, Chase, do you mind if we gave out, I don't know, Chase, how many did you give out, like 500 units or so? Yeah, that sounds about right. Version. That's about right. It's about around five to seven hundred. That's right. So yeah, five to seven hundred people got access to a like the light version, the beta version of it, and uh, and everybody in that group absolutely loved it. And some ideas and some stuff that happened during that time um, really helped us during the launch to think about how could we stick out. And so I call this the breaking in. Uh, case study because you, were, were, you guys are looking at two guys that were relatively unknown in the industry. I mean, I knew a few people because I was working with Chris and I'd been in the industry um, kind of hustling in the back end for the last three and a half years at that point. And, uh, and so I knew who everybody was. I was already going to events. I was already, I mean, I wasn't making a name for myself literally in the industry in a sense, but I was definitely making connections with other JVs. And, uh, and something that happened when I was working with Chris, um, we were in his backyard, and literally, guys, I was working for Chris. I wasn't asking for any money. I just wanted to learn and help out. Um, we were in his backyard one day, and uh, we were smoking a couple of cigars, and basically, 
I was like, hey, Chris, I mean, I'm, I'm to the point where I need to start doing something. And I've built software, um, didn't really have the best launch at that point, but the, the experience gave me so much detail about the industry. Um, you know, with that, I, I built a SaaS software that was making, you know, monthly income. And I came from an industry where I was making income from that as well. So I was able to, you know, I was able to donate my time in that sense. And I felt like that, you know, going and donating my time like that, I felt like that was something that I needed to do. Like I needed to pay my dues to break into this industry. And I knew that that was going to take some time. But at that point, I said, Chris, I've got a couple of ideas. I just want to run them by, the, by you and you tell me what you think. One of the ideas was actually becoming a JV broker and a JV manager, and Chris said, man, I actually would totally back you if that's what you wanted to do. And that was like enough, uh, enough for me to, to say, yeah, let's do it, because if I have like a super JV telling me that he would back me if I got into the JV broker part, then of course. And so then it was like, okay, so what, what's next? And Chris is like, well, why don't you start helping me with my launches and give us a second line of support? Um, Andrew Graham was his basically his main JV dude and uh, his his like VP of uh, of marketing, and so basically th those both of those guys basically brought me under their wing, and every single day we were on we were on Skype calls and stuff like that, and we were basically uh, promoting for Chris's launches, and so I helped Chris do a couple of launches. His last launch, which was Smart Member uh, 2.0, I was around there for Smart Member 1.0. I mean it. The only the only exposure that I got was that I was tagged on all of Chris's Facebook posts and stuff like that, but no one still really didn't know who I was. Uh, but the last one we did was it actually closed at one point six million dollars, and it did. Uh, I think it ended up with uh, refunds and stuff. It was like a little over one point four million. So there was some you know some people that canceled and and foolishly for those people that did cancel, they they're losing out on probably one of the most amazing. Um, products for doing memberships and stuff like that. So uh, now it's like continuity. Now it's a monthly thing. So that's just that's just that's how good software is. And and even for Chase, I know he's got a he's got a master plan for this where it's going to go into SaaS here really soon. And when it does, any of our uh, Evergreen and we'll get into what Evergreen is too for those of you that are new. But uh, for it'll go in it'll go away from Evergreen. It'll go into monthly SaaS model. Which if you paid attention to any of the training that I've been doing. With the School of Shark, we we actually covered that acronym, which is Software as a Service. So let's go ahead and get started. Chase, are you ready to get get started on this? Let's do it. Do you have anything you want to add to that as well, as far as the backstory goes? Um, I think you covered it pretty well. Yeah. Um, as far as our, yeah, we met up at the mastermind. I think we we were still even when um, I had initially launched it with uh, we were still in the beta, like. Um, basically, the day of the mastermind, I was talking with Lawrence um, and just asking him a bunch of questions. I was still kind of new to this model, business model of drop shipping, and I was just picking his brain. And he he was showing me what was going on. I was like, okay, there's got to that man. That's like the first thing I thought. I was like, I want to. First thing it was like, I want to do this model. The second thing was there's got to be an easier way to automate this, and that's where it really launched. And then. Um, several weeks later, you and I really connected, and um, you know we started just kind of initially talking about it, and then we met up again um, probably a few months before we actually launched it, and connected in person. I think we even like you know shot all of our videos there. We got everything just ready, you know, to um, to go forward with our launch, and that's kind of where it brings us to our case study to really kind of dive in what we did. So. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, so there was definitely, um, it was definitely a lot of work. There was definitely a lot of things that needed to happen. Um, one thing is that it needed to be a really killer software for this to work. I mean, I don't think that every product, even, I mean, there's a thing. There's like, there's two things that you got to keep in mind when you're doing a launch. And one is that you have a killer product, but the killer product doesn't sell. Unfortunately, the killer product doesn't necessarily sell the product. Um, you, I've seen actually really cool software products out there uh, that had the potential to crush and never really actually crushed because they never got um, they never got the backing that they needed. And what I mean by backing is they didn't recruit enough affiliates to jump on board because 
affiliates didn't know. And it could have come down to, I mean, these are all things that are actionable. I think these are all things that almost anybody could do. Um, but if they're not doing these things, then, you know, why are you building the software in the first place? I mean, it's cool to scratch your own niche, uh, your own itch. But at the same time, too, is, you know, if you want to build a business, a business has to have a return of investment. It has to have a profit margin. Um, it has to work, and uh, if if you're not if you're not really paying attention to those numbers, it's going to be really tough on you. So that's kind of the reason why. Also, we we wanted to be we wanted to break in. That was our goal. We had killer software. Chase did a phenomenal job building a piece of software that literally has changed the face of Shopify uh, e-commerce business. You know, major major players in the industry do do not even know how to work without it because of the, how good the software is itself. So he built the software. All we had to do, we had some of the connections, but we had to tie in loose ends. And then on top of that, we had to, um, we literally had to, we had to make sure that people paid attention, and we had to make sure that we kept pulling people that actually hit the website. We had to make sure we kept pulling them back through uh, the, the the funnel. And we also, the people that did buy, we had to make sure we pulled them back in through the funnel and helped them realize what they were missing out at if they didn't purchase the rest of the parts in the funnel because of how well we built the funnel out. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, whoops, give it my computer here. I like having this little thing here. So this was uh, March 26th. So I think this was the next day after we closed on the uh, the webinar. This was like the, the following day after it. So you guys can see we had, you know, 18,000 visitors, which, you know, as a, a couple of new guys just coming into the industry that's decent um, you know it's not definitely it's not super super results we could have had anywhere to 60 70 thousand like I would see on Chris's launches he had hundred thousand people uh, visitors which does make a big difference but what's important is you can look at you can see like the ultimate closing ratio was 8.6 percent over a hundred dollars per buyer and closing numbers uh, upfront money that came in was hundred and sixty one thousand one hundred and thirty two dollars so some people might you know might think that well that's not really a successful launch because yeah you broke six figures but you didn't uh, you know it wasn't like a, a you know high six-figure launch and that's okay because we did we still did a killer job and if you guys look at the bottom here these are um, down here if you guys see these these are actually the uh, the forecast these are pre-approved pre-approval uh, future bills this is actually the numbers 180 days was actually hundred and twenty four thousand dollars added because uh, when you guys see the funnel it'll all make sense to you guys when you guys actually see the funnel there it's gonna make sense that um, you're, it's gonna make sense that you guys will see the fact that um, those rebills were actually real rebills they weren't like a lifetime rebuild or anything like that they're actually real rebuilds you could see here actually some of them here OTO one a hundred people uh, got the three pay OTO2, um, 102 people got the replay, and OTO3, 81 people at that point had the replay. Um, I mean, not the replay, but we're on a monthly billing cycle. So the three pay was, you know, three months, and the other one was uh, one month. And the thing is, again, is we did some key things. So I'll go into that here in a minute that actually boosted those numbers. So here's what here was the actual numbers after we uh, boosted those numbers and and one of the key things that we did was we had value based webinars that we did directly after uh, the launch so I mean we did it in the same week I believe because we wanted to just provide a ton of value first of all to our new users we wanted to make sure that they understood how to use the software um, we wanted to make sure they understood uh, techniques and ways to find products and do research and stuff like that so they could get started with their online uh, business so they could start profiting right away with it and then also in an invisible way we actually and I don't I don't think we even really in uh, chase I don't think we even like intentionally did this but it's just sort of what happened um, which was we we basically when we would demo the software we would demo it and say like look this was OTO one this was the elite product um, this is the people that purchased the elite product. This is how that worked. And what happened was, is those people, so you could see it, this was April 19th, not even, uh, I think it was like March 19th was the, the launch day or the day before was, uh, maybe it was launched, it was March 20th. So this was the day before that. 
we actually bumped sales up dramatically. In fact, we had JVs calling us going, gosh, you keep paying me. Like, what's going on? How are you still paying me? I'm constantly getting upsells. So what was happening, though, was that we had those two first uh, value-based webinars that not a lot of uh, JVs do for whatever reason after they have a launch. They don't do value-based webinars. They'll start doing back-end webinars immediately and start selling other people's stuff, or they might have their own back-end set up. And uh, they're immediately selling instead of providing value. Instead, we provided value and indirectly upsold the the inside of the um, the funnel. So we we put the uh, I think it was a I think it was like forward slash automate shopifyapp.com forward slash automate. We had the uh, the replays on that page, and you probably still do. Um, but on there, we had the links for people to put themselves back into the funnel, and it worked like. It worked like magic because the product sold itself. The product at that point with people that already purchased it, they've already gotten to know, like, and trust us. They were on a couple of our webinars. They loved the content. Uh, and then they, they saw the value of the upsells. And so people actually drove themselves back in here. And I would say, too, Chase, that people were actually happy. There might have been a couple of people that complained about it. But overall, everybody was ex extremely happy with actually purchasing the upsell. They just didn't understand what it was. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, if you have anything you want to comment on that as well, or yeah, um, I would say, um, yeah, it was kind of we were doing our, our demos or our webinars afterward, just like you were saying. Yeah, and it just it really did like when you're going through a launch. I mean, just if you put yourself on the customer's end and you're going through the funnel, um, sometimes. And I don't blame. I'm the same way. You you come into it. You're like, okay, what is this? I've I've heard all of this hype. Um, you know, people are are saying this about the product. Let me just check it out for myself. Um, a lot of times, you know, you'll buy the front end, and you're like, oh, okay, here's an upsell. You know, well, you, you almost go in and expecting there's an upsell, which is kind of um, it can be a, a good or bad thing. So we had a lot of people that just went in and we got the pro version which is the, the first part of the funnel, and I'm guessing we'll talk about some of those as well. But, um, yeah, so they get it, and, and at this point, maybe they, they don't know us, like us, and trust us quite yet. They're just getting one part of the funnel, or, you know, they're just the first thing that's there, and they just want to try it out. So let me try it out. Um, and, and, and I think as we did the webinars, and they, could, and they got to log in, and they saw what it was and how, you know, how it could just – it really improve their uh, lives and their business, then the uh, the webinars, the value-based webinars were super, super important for us, one, to really get in and answer questions, one, just to be there, provide support, and uh, just naturally show what, uh, kind of in a live environment where people can ask questions and get feedback, show what it does. Because sometimes you try to do sales videos and you do your best, but uh, people may be on their cell phones, they may be at work, but just by being there live um, and being able to answer questions, I think that's what made it really, really powerful um, to be able to drive people and to get more upsells. It isn't like we did anything like magic, it was more just being there, being real, being accessible, um, and I think that's what really made it work. Exactly, yeah, and so if you guys notice here on the, on the page, you can see... Um, you guys can see like our the OTO one the front end. Um, I don't know exactly how much that increased by, but it definitely had a high high increase. And then you can see the people that still was you know they maybe the money was struggling or whatever, but they saw the value and they got the three pay. And so you could see that those numbers uh, almost doubled um, from the end of the launch. So our basically because of that, and I've seen launches have you know high. Um, high conversion rates in the funnel because they've done just a phenomenal job at explaining uh, what that next product was. Um, but because of those uh, those webinars, uh, we were able to boost sales quite a bit, quite drastically. So you could see 60% on OTO1 and 60% or 47% on OTO2. And I think on OTO3, uh, we boosted that a little bit too. It was like 15 or 16%. So. Then after that, we started doing. Um, well, actually, it's. I think I just added it up. So that actually brought us to three hundred and seventy-nine thousand one hundred and eleven dollars in our launch, and that was literally like 
within a month after the launch, uh, not even a month, three within three weeks after the launch closed. So you guys can see the numbers here. And then we started doing some webinars. So the first webinar we did was with uh, Chris Record. Um, so you can see that down there in the bottom. Um, let's see, there should be some other spots there. We did one with JV Zoo that did $58,413. And then uh, Chris's, I think, t was total of 34000 um, because he's on two spots. You can see there it was $34,232. So we did immediately, uh, right after that, $92,642 in sales uh, that we added to it with uh, back-end webinars, that one that we did with uh, for Shopify app and then one that we did with Chris uh, for some of, his, uh, some of his stuff that he does. So... So then we brought ourselves to $471,756, and look at that forecast, the 365-day forecast uh, to $610,000, and that was within a, you know, a little bit past a month after the launch date. So pretty phenomenal to, to look at that number and see it. You know, like we showed you, the, the upfront money at that point was um, $160,000 or something like that. Now we're looking at 471,000 within a month after the launch. A lot of people launch products and then they, they move on to something else. But we didn't, we, we, had a, we have a good product. Why would we do that? Why would we, I mean, for, for one, a launch is a lot of work. It's exhausting. Um, I, I know Chase uh, didn't realize how exhausting it was uh, <laughs> until we did it. Talk about sleepless late nights, some nights not even sleeping, so. <laughs> But that's that's the fun of it too. It's actually kind of fun, but at the same time, it is exhausting. So then, take us. Let's fast forward up to today, and uh, well, a couple days ago, actually, July seventh. Um, so basically, four hundred and forty-nine thousand six hundred and thirty-nine dollars in upfront cash, and then on top of that, uh, the the three hundred and sixty-five day forecast. And this number keeps growing. Um, we've got a couple of like evergreen stuff going out there, but again, like I said, that stuff will change soon. Uh, but I believe that if we just keep it going, probably at least until the end of the year, we should be well over seven figures uh, with with just a couple more um, webinars that we do for people on their back end. So easily, easily, we could um, bump some of these up. Some of these, uh, you know, it's it's probably not for every single list, but there's definitely like JV Zoo. They they have a big digital marketing list, and we converted them extremely well. Um, and then also with uh, Promote Labs, Promote Labs with their promotion and their back-end webinar, we did well over 100000 I don't know where we're at total with them now, but I do know that literally daily I see sales coming in from them, and their sales are like $1,000 sales. So I know, I know Chase sees it all the time as well, so it's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. So let's jump into uh, the actual methods, the strategies, um, the techniques that we used um, to get this launch rolling. And Chase, if you want to talk a little bit about what you did here with the pre-launch. Yeah, I had, um, so what I wanted to do for pre-launch was to generate a little buzz, build a list um, as, as cheaply as possible and just to create, yeah, just create a little buzz in the industry. Um, so I had used a product before called UpViral for some other campaigns and it had done really well. So what we did is implement this viral viral campaign, and it was um, it was basically you can see it here. It says we figured out how to automate drop shipping. There was a video there, and then it was basically just hey get on our waiting list. That was it was it was show the video, show what it can do. Because if you're in ecom, you're running a store, just seeing what this is able to do in itself just generates buzz, just generates the word of mouth. So it was um, kind of a pre-launch to sign up for notifications when we launch. So after they sign up for notifications, we get taken to this, and this is where this is what's really important. You can see on the left we have the irresistible offer, and that's that's key to making a viral campaign actually go viral. You can say you know it's uh, viral, or you can say um, you want it to go viral, but unless you have that irresistible offer. Um, then it's not going to make a lot of movement. So if you go back to that slide, Carl, with the irresistible offer, you can see this is our irresistible offer here. Want to get early beta access to Shopify. Um, so 
if you just saw about this and you get super excited and you sign up for it, of course you're going to want early access. Um, so that was the irresistible offer and all you needed to do is just refer three of your friends to get early access and then UpViral takes care of all the point, uh, keeping up with the points and has all of the share buttons, it gives you a, like a link that uh, tracks everything for you and so it takes care of all of that. So what was the next slide, Carl, here? Yeah, so here are the results. Um, 605 leads with like zero investment. So I didn't pay anything for these, uh, which is pretty amazing. And I didn't, you know, I could have pushed them. I pushed it a lot more, but we were so, I mean, there, when we look back at it, at the launch, there were tons of things that we could have done better, but you're just in the moment. You're trying to churn out things. You're trying to get things done. So this was with zero investment. Um, we had 555 direct visitors to the front part of it with equals 605 total leads. So you can see there's like this compound version rate over here, 109%. And that's just the power of the, the virality of the, the campaign. 231 social media shares. So that was cool, 605 leads for free. So zero, zero, zero dollars per lead. That's a, that's a good cost per lead right there. All right, is there anything you wanted to say about it, Carl? Um, yeah, I mean, this was, uh, it was definitely, I, I'd never used this yet um, at this point. I actually just used it recently. But, um, yeah, definitely when I seen this, I, it was definitely eye-opening that up viral actually is, <laughs> is something that actually could work <clears throat> to do, uh, to get your, your, you know, boost your company up. And actually, I've seen some of these ads. I actually saw some of them. Uh, you know, the people would say, like, anybody... There would be, uh, there's a lot of actual e-com um, groups that I'm a part of, and so I'd, I was actually seeing people uh, posting it going, has anybody seen this before? Yeah. Like, just trying to get other people's, um, the, you know, see if anybody's actually used the software yet, but it was beta, so not a lot of people, but there were people answering, saying saying some pretty wonderful, you know, wonderful things about it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is something that obviously was showing it was working. It, it, got, two, it got 231 social shares. So for just social proof, it worked really well, and uh, you got you know you got a, quite a few referred referred leads, which is kind of hard to do. It's kind of hard to get referred leads. Uh, you got to have a really good good bribe or ethical bribe to do it. So it worked really well, and we'll get into the numbers. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. So this is. All right. Let's see what this is, Carl. This is the, I know we have, we have the coupon code at the bottom. So this was the list that I built with UpViral. So this is the list we built using UpViral. And when we launched, I believe, this is the email that we sent out. So we, it was pretty, you know, to the point email. Here's what Shopify app does. You're probably already familiar with it. Um, a lot of you have signed up for beta access. Um, this week only, this is during our launch, we're closing the private beta and giving an incredible opportunity for you can uh, get Shopify app at a really unbelievable deal. Um, and then we even gave a coupon code that they could use to get $10 off the opening price of Shopify app. So that was key as well. So they were already excited about it, sign up for the list. Um, and now it's go time. So now it's time you can actually have it for lifetime access. So another, pretty much another irresistible offer. That yeah, point. and I was just driving them right into the funnel too, I believe, just right into yep. the front end. That's right. There was another one. So this one is, let's see. Okay, yeah, so this is just another, hey, this is, if you haven't purchased, we and Carl, you, you might want to talk about how we built the funnel. I don't know if you have a slide on that, yeah, but you can see do. that we second do. line is very, very important where it says if you haven't purchased yet, I wanted to make sure you got in before the price increases tonight. So that's always very important to have the you have to have when you're doing an offer you need urgency. You need a reason for people to act now because all of us, Carl, me, we all do this where you will just sit there and you'll just kind of, you won't take action. We're just, we procrastinate because we're, 
we're busy, we're doing something else. Or, so you need a reason why should people act now? They know they want it, but why should they act now? So it's that fear of loss. loss. Yeah, exactly. So you kind of uh, pull them back through. Yeah, it's the fear, exactly, the fear of loss, the fear of missing out on a great deal, the fear uh, that really, I mean, I, it really compels us all because especially if we know it's, it's good to begin with and then you have that fear, okay, I, I could get it uh, now and have a great deal or I can wait later and pay more. So. And, that, and just to kind of touch on that, um, it's like the push and pull. So the push and pull technique is something I talked about yesterday on our training, but I didn't really go into full depth of what that actually means. What it means is that you either uh, run away from fear or you, or you move towards pleasure. So you're either like um, basically pu pushed away from fear or pulled into pleasure, and um, and so that's that's the thing is like for entrepreneurs, um, you're, we're more um, what do you call it? We're like it's, sometimes it's hard for entrepreneurs to figure out like their sales copy for their list because we're more um, we go we're actually going after what we have for our pleasure and we're not scared of of fears in order to get there. But people, but eighty-five percent of the people are actually the opposite opposite of that. They would rather they fear success so much that they it pushes them away. So knowing that that's usually most of the people on your list, and you're and you're trying to do what's best for them. By you know, I mean ethically, we're trying to do what's best for them as a salesperson. This is what kind of makes salespeople and and marketing there's good and bad. Uh, but the ones that are really great are the ones that are doing it because they believe in it. They have a belief system that. Um, they want to they're at, they want to help improve people's lives and they have a good product and they believe in it so you sometimes have to push people through or pull people through um, to your message and using scarcity techniques um, works and and we also we weren't fibbing or anything like that the price was increasing because of the way we designed our funnel but we had to keep scarcity in our funnel so that way we could pull we could help people you know, move off the pot and make a decision if they're in or if they're out. And that's really the, the idea. That's why this works so well. And, and another thing at the bottom of that email, and it's on this one too, so you can stay here. Either one's fine. You can see where it says note. There are two upgrades that we offer once you purchase Shopify to Out Pro, some pretty cool stuff. So it's a little bit of a tease there. And then we have the demos. Uh, I thought this was really important because if um, depending on what level you are, if you just look at the first sales page, you don't really see the full power of Shopify app. Um, so I wanted to make sure that we included this as well because it makes like the elite makes it even more powerful. The unlimited makes it even more powerful. So I wanted to make sure people had the, the full picture and just to be aware, hey, there are a couple of upgrades that are coming. Yeah, and also too, I noticed on the top you put like final notice, you know, so that's a that's a good um, headline. Final notice: All beta accounts on the weekend on Saturday, and they'll be moved to the free plan. So basically, like I think, because there were some people that were in beta already, maybe that had this one. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you're just moving them through. Yeah. So that's that fear of loss. All beta accounts will end on Saturday. There it is, right there. Yeah, you can see it a lot better. Um, cool. So yeah, this is what uh, this added an extra almost twenty thousand dollars, and it's probably actually been more. I and mean, this number is actually very. Um, it's not. I don't think this is the full number, but it's. But it definitely just gives you an idea that having some sort of like pre-launch setup with some beta stuff going on, uh, especially when it comes to software, is not a bad idea. Um, the problem with our industry is that a lot of people push out their software too soon. And it's buggy and it has problems and stuff. Even though we know, like, even for me, as promoting someone else's product, um, I don't necessarily want to push that to my list. But if I know the person that's offering the product and I know that they have integrity, I still might do it because I know that they're going to actually come back and fix whatever bugs they have. But it's definitely, it's definitely an issue in our industry where they're not ready. And I've seen big promoters, like, I mean, big time promoters that. Uh, will not promote for you. I mean, I can I can tell you guys, uh, and and I, me and Chase have become really close to these guys. But the guys that like promote labs, for instance, 
they will not touch your they will not offer your software to their list because they don't want to have all the um, the support tickets for your software if you're if you have a buggy software coming out so they like that full built like there's big people like them that have giant lists and have a really good following <clears throat> they they that's part of their pride they're not going to offer your software if it has bugs or just doesn't seem ready yet uh, they'll even point blank tell you your software is not ready we're not going to offer it and there's nothing else you can do about that so it's it's a, a lesson to be learned in the industry is that if you have software just make sure you do like this is why we this is why Chase did it he was able to build a lot of buzz around the uh, around the launch because he built a beta list and uh, got people utilizing the light version of it um, before he could bring them back into the funnel and, and then upsell them and so basically because of that you could see right here that added an extra twenty thousand dollars now when we go and do this again I can guarantee you guys this number is going to be like three times this it's going to be at least three times this I would even I would even suspect maybe even four times this because of because we were able to stick out a little bit better into the industry and also because now we've kind of built something so just uh, just some food for thought for the JVs that are on here. Um, so let's talk about the funnel. Okay, the funnel. This this thing took us a while to really uh, dial in. Um, we did get some feedback in the uh, the mastermind we're in, but I don't think we really used what we the feedback we got from them. We kind of we kind of came up with this, um, and we've seen a couple people like uh, Devin Zander. He sort of like was the first person I ever seen do the three phase front end launch. And for those of you guys that are new, what is a three phase launch? Well, how do you keep scarcity? So seeing launches, even at Chris's office, and and I would see and I talked to other JVs, and they would say one of the things they hated about launches was that the middle of the launch would just drag on. So like the two or three days in between the first two and the last two days of the launch would just trickle sales. They didn't there was no scarcity. People weren't making actions. People weren't moving on purchasing. So Devin had the idea. I don't know if this was his idea or not, but he was one of the first people I seen that did it and have a seven figure launch or have a really high six figure that turned into seven figures in his back ends was he did this thing called the three phase launch. And what the three phase launch is you see it says D one, D three, D five. That's day one, day three, day five. So every two days we actually had a $10 increase in the front end. So people that hit the sales page, there was a countdown timer we could use uh, throughout the whole launch. This is magic. This was like magic. This worked incredibly well. So in the middle of the launch, we had the people that, you know, well, why not, why not save an extra $10 and not wait till the last day? And I know that, uh, you know, if I do another launch that's going to be based off this, which I personally would never move away from this model at this point anyway until someone comes up with some better idea, um, I would actually, at this point, I'd probably actually increase the price. So I'd probably do 57, 67, 77, or 47, 57, 67. But again, going back onto the fact that nobody knew who we were, we had to provide, we had to, we had to have a little bit lower of an entry point for people to get in. And the thing about the entry point being low enough and not being known, it's more of a customer standpoint of view, not really a JV standpoint of view. If my JV does bring uh, the heat and they send some people here, they don't know who we are. Even though we had this really beautifully made um, sales page that Chase built actually, and also we did these really cool videos. We hired a professional video guy. Um, we did some really cool things with the video that I don't think we'll probably get into on this on this webinar, but we did some really cool things with that. Um, but we had to have a low enough entry point where people that didn't know us and didn't like us and didn't trust us yet that the um, that the fact that they buy in would be a low risk. So if you can make the low risk, the entry and the barrier point very low for people, even if, even if they're like, well, you know what, if I get screwed over, it's only 37 bucks. Or if I get screwed over, it's only 47 bucks. Or if I get screwed over, it's only 57 bucks. Okay, so their their loss is very low, and they can actually get into the funnel itself. So that's, that's how that front end worked. Then, instead of, uh, and then we went into the OTO1, which OTO1, some people might have said, wow, $197 is the immediate upsell. But here was the thing is the, the front end, was so much value. It, had, it was such a great, such a cool product, and we were able to stack like little bonuses in there and add a bunch of features. Like we had to 
me and Chase had to strategize which features would go into Elite, which features would go into Unlimited, which features would go into the front end, which was um, what do we call the front end? I don't even remember the the what do we call it, Chase? You're talking about the Pro, like the name the of Pro. It? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Pro Elite Unlimited, which was actually a pretty cool uh, name for each one, but the Pro had so many features and um, and it, it delivered 100%. Like when people saw the Pro, they were like, wow, this is amazing. Um, there's there's software out there um, now that charges, I think, 47 bucks a month that does only what the Pro does. So um, just, just to keep that in mind, so we were doing that at one price, we could get people in. Then OTO1 one was such a cool product as well, as well because it had like the auto-fulfillment, I believe it had the auto fulfillment, and it had mm -hmm. the um, the uh, image editors stuff like that that was built into it. Um, then that was that, and then we did a downsell into a three pay instead of a downsell into like half the features or training or something like that that I've seen in other launches. We felt that the um, the OTO one was strong enough that we could actually just pull them into a three pay, and I'd actually never really seen other launches do three pays. Uh, maybe there was a couple out there, but I just hadn't personally seen uh, that actually moved into that strategy, and that worked really well. And then we did the OTO2, which was the unlimited, so it was like unlimited sub-users, unlimited stores. So the first two were basically only a one-store app, uh, but OTO2 being so much power behind it at 297 it was still a steal. It was still a good deal. Um, and then we had a three pay at ninety nine dollars, and that was even good because usually three pays that you see they're usually um, a little bit more than that um, in the total value. And then we realize, and then Chase actually, this was Chase's idea on OTO three. He said, "I want to commit myself to doing weekly trainings and helping people." So at that point, what he did is he did an OTO three at forty seven bucks a month. That would actually bumps bumped up now to ninety seven bucks a month. So it had a lot of value in it, and uh, he put together like a, a private Slack group for it, um, and uh, and it just has tons of high value training, and also has a membership site that people can go and watch replays at. And he's continuing to build that list and continuing to build that value on that on that as well. So Chase, do you have anything you want to say on the funnel itself? Um, no, I think you did a great job explaining. I guess uh, the front end is important. You, when, you, uh, when you're doing your launch, you always want to think about your strategy for your front end because there's a couple different options. Uh, in our case, we did go with a lower front end because we wanted, uh, a, more, we wanted a bigger list. Uh, we wanted, um, yeah, so if you price yourself out, uh, if you do a higher front end, like we could have just said, this is the whole part of a funnel, like why do you do a funnel? Um, we could have just said, okay, here is everything. Here's Shopify app. It costs you know, 600 bucks or $1,000, um, which is kind of you know where we are right now. But when we're just starting out, if we would have done that, nobody knew us, That like Carl was saying. We would have started out with just one thing, with everything all there together, then probably half the, or more, probably more than that of, of uh, the current user base would have never even uh, dipped their toes in to, to know if they would like us or like the app or because it would have just, um, it wouldn't have just too big of a commitment. So when you're thinking about your own funnels, even with e-commerce or whatever you're in, or if you're a JV or you're going to build a product or you're going to promote a product, think about how the funnel is set up. Um, so your front end is very, very key. And it is the kind of the loss leader approach because it was worth way more than $37. I mean, we sell it for $97 now, uh, lifetime. And um, and even past that, we're uh, already moving into the, the monthly model. So at $37 is definitely the loss leader approach where you're selling it at a loss. Like if, if that's all somebody bought was a $37 product, then... You know, it isn't like we're making a lot of money because you split the money with JVs and there's percentages that are taken out from your payment processors. So it's more of uh, you're expecting a certain number of people to convert on some of the, to see the value on the other uh, parts of the funnel. And, um, and then the numbers, in this case, and they worked. So if you have, if you know you have a killer product, um, then you can break it out like this instead of just offering for one price. And it allows you to do, uh, to get a lot of people through the list. Um, so I would say that was that was a, a good, really good takeaway or a good action item that you can take to apply to other things. 
yeah, it worked like it was great. It worked really well. So then we had a um, a retargeting campaign that we put together, and we did this uh, for obviously to, during the launch. There was definitely a lot of scarcity that was built up in the launch, so um, we were able to we were able to actually use this, and um, also too we did this for our JVs. So we we wanted to make sure that we could continue to drive sales back into uh, into the funnel or people that didn't buy. Okay. So we did what was called a um, a retargeting pixel and a conversion pixel. So you can see here on the left, it says FE, which is front end, front end pixel follow. So basically, what we did is we were following uh, people on Facebook, and then um, and then we had a no follow. So there's an option in Facebook that you can basically say exclude, and you basically would exclude people that hit the second pixel, which is the conversion pixel. So that way your message only would go to the people that did not buy. And there was kind of a little strategy that we want that we did with that, which was I think we did like a ten ten dollar off coupon. And and once people bought, there's no re real reason to send, hey, look, you could have saved ten dollars. So we basically but people that were we wanted to try to drive back in, maybe they were bargain hunters or whatever, the front end wasn't necessarily I mean, ten dollars isn't really that big of a deal. The front end wasn't where, like I said, a lot of the money was made. It de it definitely brought in some money, but it was the back end. It was the funnel itself, and then obviously going into the back end stuff that we did. So that's how the Facebook pixel worked, and it worked pretty good. I I think uh, I think Chase, we kind of we both might have dropped the ball a little bit. We didn't um, focus too much on it, but we definitely did do some pretty cool ad creatives. Here were some of the ad creatives that came out. This was the this says viral campaign though that we did. So it's, I think we're we're bouncing around here. This was the this must have been the viral one, I guess. Or was this uh remember yeah, that it might have just been the wrong heading at the top, potentially. Okay. Um so remember the e-packet identifier. It's yours free now. That's what we did. Okay, that reminds me. Okay, so what we did on going back to this was people that weren't buyers, we gave them the free uh, e packet identifier. So we were basically saying, okay, we knew we didn't we knew they weren't going to buy at this point. Uh, so what can we do to get them at least get them back? Maybe build the lead, or if not build the lead, uh, well, if we could build the lead, and then we could try to sell them after that. So basically, we were like, hey, hey, check out this video. I, I think I made this little like video, and then we had our video editor make it even cooler. Um, so basically, it would just run in their run in their ad, and they'd say like, remember the e packet identifier. It's now yours for free, Shopify app for free. So people were like, what, I can get this for free? I was just on that site. So hopefully they didn't bounce out at that point. But if they didn't bounce out and they paid attention, they just didn't buy for whatever reason, they were seeing this e-packet identifier uh, extension and the example being played in their screen. And so that actually worked pretty good. And this uh, was yeah, so, the other. What's so that? this was the viral campaign. This was another viral campaign that we did. Okay. That's what it was. So we used a viral again for this. I remember now. That's it. That's it. It's the same. It's the same campaign, but it's uh, but it was it was used. We were using a viral campaign during the launch. So, yep. so yeah. So Chase built this really cool. Um, you can see on the side it's a carousel ad, which is was really cool. I don't think we really tested between two of these, but you could see that this was on the left and then on the right. Um, this was the the little video that I made, and then we had our video guy make it even cooler. Like if you notice at the very beginning, um, so it's like showing you right there how how to use it, and then it shows you right there how what it looks like. But if you notice at the very beginning, it'll show right here in a second. It pops out. So get it free during launch. Wait right now. See that how it pops out? We had our video guy do that because there's no sound or anything like that, and we needed to get people's attention. We needed to grab people's attention. So. That actually, I think, worked pretty decent. We could have done better on this thing too. We didn't. I don't think we really pumped. We were so busy with so much going on that we kind of like we kind of like missed out on this. Even though we put all this work into the video and the carousel ad, we just didn't put a lot of money into it because um, things were just happening so fast. But this was the uh, this is what happened. So after they got the, I think this is what happened, Chase. What we did is we did um, get the Shopify app for free. Sign up here. So they had to sign up for a viral campaign, and then once they signed up for the viral campaign, we said, "Hey, and incentivized, want to get ten dollars off the Shopify app Pro." So if they wanted to get ten dollars off, they all they had to do was share. 
and uh, the viral campaign said you only needed three more points. So it was telling them once they shared, there was a point system there. You ba we basically can control this, the point systems the way it works with with uh, up viral. So like if someone actually signs, we could give them more points. So this gave them incentive to at least share three times because they got one point for every sign up. Actually, this actually was for per sign up. So we could have we could have probably done this part a little bit differently too. We could have said like you know get three points per share and all you need is 10 points so either you get you could say even if one person signed up but there's different ways you could do this um, that I've learned but basically this was this actually works pretty decently um, so basically because of that and like I said we didn't put we didn't put a lot of money into the actual ads themselves I think if we would have pumped a bunch of money into the ads themselves we would have seen a lot greater numbers but we had a 81 direct visitor visitors 33 leads from it total 12 shares so like 40%, just the fact of seeing 40% were sharing, um, we should have probably pumped in more money into this. We should have actually really uh, maybe put a few hundred bucks into this. But you live and you learn, right? So then there's also um, this, and that's, that's the thing too, guys. You guys are going to learn from some of our, possibly some of our mistakes and also some of the things that really worked well. Um, so here was we did, we did something else during launch. This, this is part of the reason why we're so busy is we also did a, uh, a webinar jam, Ever Webinar. Okay, we used their Ever Webinar. We actually just did a regular webinar on GoTo, and then we took the video and we uploaded it to uh, Amazon S3, and then, uh, and then from there, uh, we actually allowed each JV, if they wanted to, we would make them their own copy, because you can clone, you can clone Ever Webinars, um, inside their system, and then once you clone it, you could put the link. We could use their their uh, link in their own, very own webinar, and then they could drive drive traffic to these pre-recorded webinars. And basically, and then we did retargeting on top of that with uh, naked URLs. So um, basically, we did a we we brought Lawrence Aponte on. He was you know he was a multi um, six figure earner and multi store owner. And we basically interviewed him, and he showed his results, and it was pretty exciting. And then, uh, and so it was just a cool. It was another cool tool that I don't see a lot of people doing. Um, and that's one way you could do it. You could actually, you could actually clone each uh, webinar, and then have those people send their own traffic. And even further, if they wanted to pixelate, I don't think there would be an issue with uh, us allowing them to pixelate, and then us giving them some ad creatives. This is just even thinking further. Um, we could have done this where we give them ad, our ad creatives and then they actually spend a couple dollars on retargeting, maybe five bucks a day, depending on how much traffic they sent there because that's really all you'd really need to do. These were some of the numbers, some of the statistics. So main retargeting webinar, uh, unique visitors. This was like some of them. So I didn't show all of them, but the number one JV had uh, 53 uniques and 26 registered and basically he had three to 18. 21 people basically watch. So really good show up rates. And then this is how the up viral, going back into the up viral way that this works. So so someone came in, this is this is you guys gotta pay attention to this part. This is this is important. So what happened is as soon as we started using that up viral campaign, we now had an email address for them. And we weren't necessarily worried about people unsubscribing. Okay because we just wanted to get people in, in the door, buy the ups, buy the, get into the front end, we knew the upsells would sell themselves. We just did it, we just executed it, like I showed you guys earlier, just we knew that it was gonna work. So what we did is we said, the first one was a welcome email. Here's the welcome email, here's how you download the, the app so you could start using it right away. We wanted them to start having that user experience and ownership experience right away. So immediately the day of, they were getting that. Then the next one was how to use. Here's another quick email the same day. Here's how to use it. Then the third one, because we knew that there was going to be price increases uh, practically daily, then we had an email that nudge them that says, hey, by the way, uh, the price is going to be increasing very, very soon, and we want to make sure that you realize that before you lose out. Then we had uh, a fourth email that went out, so we were inundating them pretty hard with emails. But the fourth one said, hey, here's the benefits of the upgrade, or you know, here's the benefits of the app that you could get right now while it's still available. So we did that, 
okay? And then people obviously poured in and they made some sales. But then on the last day, I called this the hammer down campaign because we sent five emails throughout the day with a discount code. And we had a discount code if they, if they used up viral and they, they shared it to three people or they had three people sign up into the up viral campaign. Um, but what happened was that, like I said, we didn't put a lot of money into that. But what did happen was on the last day we said, and we, we pre-planned this. So we basically said on the last day, this was sort of actually kind of my idea. I basically just said, let's just hammer them out and we'll just give away the, the, the discount code to everybody. The price has already increased to the highest price, so all the scarcity was going to be there anyway, and uh, they could actually save $10 on that last last two days. But that was actually on the last day. And Chase, I don't know if you want to touch on that. These were the emails that Chase wrote for those. Yeah, so let's see what we have here. Free access, your Shopify app. E-packet ID access, so yeah, that's just kind of their the first email, the follow-up emails there. You can say, you can see, I'm trying to see what's the biggest takeaways here, but we still wanted to give you, okay, so this is somebody who, who came and they didn't buy. Just thanks for checking out Shopify app. We saw you weren't ready to purchase yet, and that's okay, but we still wanted to give you a free gift for taking the time to check out Shopify app. Tons of amazing features, and then um, we wanted to give you free access to one of our favorites, which is the ePacket identification. So that's where we um, we gave that away, and you could register there to get their free Shopify app account. So that it's is that. It's basically these people, though. These were these emails. Yep. Um, so and then it says, here's what to expect. So you always want to let people. That's that's very important to always let people uh, know what what to expect when you're. Um, Especially if they're going to, they're clicking a link. You want to know here's what's going to happen. Um, and then look at the bottom. This is pretty cool too. It says, uh, "P.S. New to drop shipping? Check out the value pack training. Um, it looks like a typo. It's basically, where we interview a six-figure drop shipper and talk about how to get set up with your own store. Oops. So that was really really cool. And you can see it at the top of this, the middle part there." Um, yeah, so that was that really. Was webinar. We were driving yeah. those people to the webinar. So that was really cool. I think that was really helpful because there's a lot of people who um, didn't, you know, are new to drop shipping. So if you're new to drop shipping, then and you have no idea, it's like if you don't see or if you if you don't know about drop shipping, then Shopify app doesn't it isn't going to be it mean as much to you. Because there's like this huge opportunity in drop shipping, and there still is today. Um, but if you don't know about that, then yeah, Shopify app doesn't it doesn't make sense. So um, we definitely wanted to for those people to let them know, hey, there's this crazy opportunity in drop shipping right now. So I think that was important. So I guess this is just one email. This is a pretty long email. <laughs> um, Follow-up emails. Okay. Last chance. Okay, this is the last, last day. day. Yeah. yeah, so this is important. Again, we talked about this urgency. So this is the one we hammered on the last day. We just wanted to make sure because people are, again, on the last day, um, you know how your email inboxes are. So if you, we send you something in the morning, you may miss it. But if you, just, if you send it out a few times per day, and we wouldn't do this, obviously, every day um, if, for like our long-term list. But this was like the last day of the launch. You have to make sure people know about it. Um, because you know, they, they may miss it. So, and so yeah, you can see the coupon code there for a last chance. And we had a lot of people use that particular coupon code. So, what was the result? <laughs> 62 <laughs> extra sales. 62 extra sales. Again, we I know we could have probably did a little bit better on the because if we would have if we would have spent more money on the ad part of it, I think we would have done better. But just the fact that just the even the, what we did, even though we executed, we did a fantastic job on the ad creatives and doing the um, the webinar part and adding the um, the coupon codes and stuff like that. This, by the way, too, this doesn't show all the sales. This just shows the people that use the coupon code. So <clears throat> this is actually not even a, a true representation, but the the fact that it did dr drive in. Um, quite a bit of extra sales, so I would still say maybe even close to double that is probably more closer to the numbers. 
Um, we're just we're just kind of under promising on this, but I think if we would have had if we spent more money on the ad, just so just a learning experience, and um, and and that's it. I think we would have this would have really really crushed pretty hard. But you can see just on the just on using that one coupon code on the last day, how many sales that that brought in on the last day. So let's talk about our strategy. <clears throat> so on March. Uh, 28th, it was $246,993, and we went from that to $668,000. So one thing that we did was Chase wanted to use uh, push notification software, and there's a bunch of different push notification softwares, uh, but at the time I think this was the only one we had access to. Um, so Chase wanted to test start testing out push notifications, and nobody was really using those yet even though uh, the products were out there but uh, as you can see look how many people have subscribed just from this launch so you can see that there was 104 on VIP lifetime accounts uh, beta there was 14 um, team Shopify which was kind of like the beta 63 um, JVZoo Pro people that bought just the JVZoo Pro 762 people so probably close to half of the people that purchased, not probably a little bit more, probably more like 70, 60, 70 percent, and then people that got the free app, 102. So that's quite a few people that joined on push notifications. If you guys don't know what push notifications are, you, you probably do because you've probably been hit by them from myself or Chase. But basically, it's the little thing that pops up on the right hand side of your screen that says, you know, it, it sends a quick message and always usually has a link associated with it. So you just click on it, it takes you directly to webinars takes you directly to offers stuff like that and it's immediate this is a uh, new it's a not I mean I guess the technology is actually pretty new um, I had someone a good friend actually show this to me about a year ago uh, but it was very very um, basic and it's definitely um, it's definitely a cool software nowadays so um, I would recommend that you use it for any of your software. It's easy to get people to um, opt in. They're not giving an email address or anything like that. They're just basically um, approving you to send them push notifications. So I'm sure you guys have seen it. And this is what it would look like on your screen. So you can see like uh, this was just an example here of the closing day Ecom Success Club, Success Club price increase. So when we decided that we were going to increase the price from 47 a month to 97 a month, um, Chase sent out a push notification and look at this, 494 uh, people immediately got it delivered to them and 92 people clicked it. So we always talk about, in email marketing, we always talk about open rates. So this is kind of like an open rate, 18.47% is pretty darn good. Um, I've seen better and I've seen worse. You know, it's still the same things. People are getting banner blind to push notifications even. Um, so I get accused and I get in trouble for this. I send too many sometimes. So it's something you got to be kind of picky and choosy with uh, with sending these, but they are very effective when you do it. It also, too, comes down to your headline. You need to have a good headline. You need to have some good subject stuff in, in there. Your image has to be recognizable. If it's your brand or something like that, people would recognize the brand. Um, recently, I did one with my picture on it. And uh, that had a really, really high uh, rate of uh, clicks because people do resonate with uh, pictures and images like that. Here are some other ones that kind of show you. So uh, clicks, this top one's pretty amazing. I mean, only 53 people got sent because <clears throat> it was a smaller list, but uh, half the people, over half the people, looks like clicked it or right at half. And then at the bottom, you see uh, another pretty good uh, number, 122 clicks. So like you have an offer. <laughs> and you're a JV or something like that, and you want to get clicks to an offer right away. This is a pretty, pretty a fascinating, fascinating thing because it's pretty instantaneous, wouldn't you say, Chase? I mean, like you send an email, and who knows when someone's going to open that email up? Yeah, this is pretty instant. <laughs> it's pretty instantaneous, and um, the technology is hasn't gotten to uh, cell phones yet, but I think it's coming soon. Um, so that's you know, text messaging and stuff like that works really well at the time. So pretty amazing stuff. Here's some analytics, and Chase, I don't know if you want to go over this because I know you were kind of using this, but these, these numbers are a little bit weird. Yeah, um, you can see uh, the, there's a column toward the right-hand side. It says lifetime purchase goal completions. 
So you can look at that and see how many different goal completions there were. This is a little, this is cool. You can see some of the referrals. This is uh, the source and medium. So if you go into your Google Analytics and you go down to acquisition tab, there's something that says like um, all traffic sources or something like that. And this shows the source that sent your traffic and the medium that it was sent to. So you can see a lot of, we have a lot of referrals because this was an affiliate launch. So we had people pushing to our product. And you can see the top uh, referrals. You can kind of disregard the top two because those are like internal uh, traffic. But bonuscreate.com, which is uh, something put together by one of our affiliates, um, they sent a lot of traffic. Um, and then it's like uh, just people clicking from their JVZoo customer accounts. There's some definitely, there's some organic traffic. It's like Munchai sent a lot of traffic. There's a webinar that sent traffic and so forth. Uh, so this is good just to know uh, your numbers. The one thing that works that I didn't really realize until after we, the launch was over was that I had let um, a few of our JVs see all or have links to all of the pages inside of the funnel. And what happened was that uh, a few JVs, and I, I'm not sure you know who, but they posted all of the links to all of the pages when they were promoting it. And I don't think they you know did like intentionally try to mess anything up. But the the ideal place was to start at the beginning of the funnel. But what happened when they posted all of these links? People were entering the funnel like at the second page, or they might go to the very last offer. And it was very confusing when it was confusing for people. So this is a lesson. Um, you don't want people to enter your funnel at the end of it because it gets very confusing. Um, yeah, and and I see, you know, a lot of JVs, um, I see that's a strategy that they do use because they feel like that it's like really, because, you know, they realize that their customer base is so used to a funnel and they know that that front end is going to be, you know, the way to get people in. So people are kind of used to that. So a lot, there are JVs that I've seen that actually use that as a marketing method. So they're like, hey, we're just being upfront. We're showing you the OTO one, the OTO two, the OTO three. So I do see that, but it was, but that probably could be something that would be fixed with just better communication. So if we, if if me and Chase would have had hindsight, now we know, yeah. and you guys can know too, is like, hey, it's let your JVs know that, hey guys, I know I'm going to show you. You can, you guys can go look at the OTOs. Um, try not to click on there too much because we're we want to have really good analytics. But just don't share them with your list. So if we would have, you know, in the future, we can definitely tell them, hey, guys, just, uh, uh, you know, don't show the OTOs because of uh, tracking. You know, you're going to get people buy there, and it won't. They have to buy the front end for this software to work. Because exactly. people will go, that's, that's where the issue happened was Chase is like, well, I don't see you. <laughs> I don't see you here. And they're like, well, I have. I bought the pro, you know, I bought the elite version or I bought the unlimited version. Because they think that they're buying the unlimited version, and they don't need to buy the pro or the elite. So. Yeah, it got a little confusing. Yeah, if somebody bought the last version, they thought it included the other two, um, which wasn't the case. Because if they would have went through the front end of the funnel, it would have made a lot more sense. So that was probably it's probably for a learning experience when I was talking with people. And well, I think we even had a slide on live chat, uh, maybe. Um, but when I was talking with people, that's probably one of the number one feedback that I had was there was just a little confusion there. But once I explained everything, it made sense. But besides that, tracking was a big deal because the way I fired our conversion pixel is I put I put it on the second page of the funnel because I was assuming everybody was coming through the front end of the funnel, the very pro, you know, they were coming through the pro version, and then they would go to elite, then they would go to unlimited. But that wasn't the case with everybody because, again, they were coming in at different points. So... That was definitely another, um, the analytics here aren't completely, they don't, you know, help as much as they would have if everybody would have went through the, the front end of the funnel. And one thing, one thing I noticed here too, and I, I, don't, I think maybe I overlooked it, but Munchai, if you guys don't know who Munchai is, Munchai is like a place that you, if you have a launch, if you're launching your own product, it's a good place to, um, to advertise that launch coming up, and you can buy advertising space there, and you can... Um, it's like a directory of upcoming launches, so it's munchai.com, and it's owned by Chris Munch, who's now a friend. He's a cool guy, but basically it's a 
uh, it's a good place that uh, you can go if you're if you're going to launch a product. That's like where all the JVs go to look at future products that fulfill their list. So just letting you guys know that are new. <clears throat> so how do we take a two hundred forty six thousand dollar launch to a six hundred sixty eight thousand dollar launch? Included. Uh, so here's some of the things that we did. We included live chat on the sales page during and after. Um, after the launch ended, didn't close the offer for several weeks. We just increased the price. So that was uh, that's kind of key. I see a lot of people that close the doors, and I've even seen JVs that are like, "Well, you got to close your doors if you're going to close your doors." And why would you close your doors? You just opened up for business. <laughs> that's how I look at it, anyway. You just opened up your a uh, uh, business, even though. There's a lot of people in the industry that kind of go in this launch mode where they launch, 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 which is fine, but each time they launch a product, if you look at that as a business, as an actual viable business, if people buy it and that product launches and it's very successful during a launch, they just created a huge um, piece of income to their bottom line. They just created like a, another business. So put people in charge of it and let it run itself or get some people that, that could run it as a business and put it on, on actual market like uh, you know Shopify app is a product that will be uh, main, a mainstream product so it is a viable business um, with that product it's fine to get out move on to what's next and have another product to launch but um, when you have it and you have something that's done at least a hundred and fifty thousand and upfront sales and then is growing keep it as a business something I learned from uh, Chris Munch recently too um, he's a one focused person and he was doing a lot of launches a long time ago and he felt inundated because you there's this thing called the reciprocation if someone promotes for you I'm kind of obligated to promote for um, for them so it's it's kind of this like reciprocation thing that happens it's like a loop of reciprocations it's kind of one of the parts of the industry that's just <clears throat> it's one of those things that uh, I wish wasn't there, but it's kind of necessary too. You know, it's it's good and bad, and um, and so what Chris told me was, and he had he had like a little uh, seminar about it. He basically said that he got sick of being in that same loop, and he just wanted to focus on a couple of things. And one of his focuses is on a a product that is a like a PR uh, product software that helps companies get PR uh, online, basically. And um, and now I think they've done like 2.5 million dollars in sales in the last two years with that company. And he's basically as a, he has another friend of mine, Jay, basically running it. And um, and he's he's really big at focusing on that one thing that is sustainable. So once you have like a sustainable business, there's nothing wrong with actually turning that into something sustainable. Like like Shopify is literally it it could be something sustainable, especially when it goes into the SaaS model that could last for years and years and years and years and I think that that's something that maybe a lot of people do miss out in this industry because they're so launch crazy and, and again like I said there's nothing wrong with being doing launch after launch after launch after launch um, just remember that some of those can turn into really good businesses um, so we increased the price kept the doors open I think the doors are actually shut now um, but there might be a secret back door somewhere um, there's a two-part series value-based webinar pushing OTO. So remember what we told you at the beginning? We had these two straight-up value-based, and we invisibly sold the OTOs. The, the way we did that is we basically just showed them. We just gave demos on what they were, and then they basically people were asking. Of course, people live on the calls were saying, how do I get access to that? How do I get access to that? I want access to that. So we were able to give them access to the OTOs. And then the uh, the Slack group, which was pretty cool. Um, instead of using a doing a Facebook group, which a lot of people do, and that works pretty good too. That's pretty cool to do. Mm -hmm. But instead of that, we just took them off of the um, the Slack group completely. Mm -hmm. I mean, we took them off Facebook completely, and we put them directly into the Slack group. Then we did uh, we gave uh, coupons to JVs during the launch. So we had some of our favorite JVs, not necessarily favoritism or anything like that, but JVs that could bring some heat, um, we were able to give them uh, a coupon so that way they could do a lot of sales on the first day and also we converted to a mid-ticket webinar. So after after the uh, the launch happened, we converted the product into a 997 product basically or a or just the app itself I think is like 697. So it just depends on 
of where you might have come through to us, but that the product itself has become a mid-ticket product. The 997 is the one that includes like the training and stuff like that. The other one doesn't. Um, very cool. I'm getting hit up. So let me uh, continue here. Then we also had a we we closed the sales funnel, like I said, and then we did back end webinars with mid ticket offers. So that's really how we took it from two hundred and forty six thousand to six hundred and sixty eight thousand uh, dollars in sales. Um, here's what the live training looked like on the page. It had the links to upgrade right on that. So we had the uh, the replays and the and the upgrade links. So they were just constantly selling themselves for a while there. Then we did a back end webinar with uh, with Chris Record. And he did this 3.0 club, Team Shopify, that he has and Dark Post Profits 2.0. And uh, I think he just basically bundled all of his Dark dark Post Profits. Did $34,232. We actually did two webinars for it. Um, and then uh, me and Chase did this one for JVZoo, which uh, they'd never mailed their replay. But uh, we were very excited and honored to actually have the opportunity to do it. Which was um, we act they they mailed their list. We had close to 500 people, like 460 people on live, and uh, we gave away free money, and a lot of people loved it and enjoyed it. And uh, we did $58,000 in sales on that live webinar, which was pretty amazing. That's the biggest one I've ever done uh, live, you know, all at once. Um, so there you go. You got you saw it right here. Um, this was our sales page that we had for it afterwards, I believe, 58,000. And then that's it. So I wanted to share with you guys too um, all the software we use. Want to give a, a shout out and a special thanks to all the people that develop these softwares. Um, they work phenomenally great. So we used EverWebinar, which is a great product. We used InstaPages. We didn't use ClickFunnels. We used InstaPages. Um, but I definitely like both. I like both of them a lot for many reasons. Um, we use JVZoo, so if you're launching a product and you're new, JVZoo is a good place to go when you're starting because it's where a lot of JVs kind of prefer to use them, and they're sort of, they're becoming like a trusted place. Um, we also used UpViral, so you guys know about that. We use Push Lotus. I don't know if uh, Push Lotus is the best one out there, but I've I've been using a couple of different ones, and uh, you know they all have they all kind of have their own thing. Um, we used Active Campaign, which now I'm starting to love Active Campaign. I'm using them a lot. Uh, I would never. I, I had an account, just never used it. Never really got into it. Chase had an account. He gave me access, and I was like, I really like. I like Active Campaign after starting to use them. Um, we used Scriptall, so Ben Adkins' uh, script writing software that helped us write all the sales copy. Basically, uh, I put in there. I built the. I built the sales copy using Scriptall, but I didn't use their actual word for word I actually just rewrote everything and I, that's what I like about script writing softwares is that it gives you a good template for something to rewrite that actually works. Uh, we use Vimo for the video, we use Slack for the private groups, we had two private groups, we had one for buyers and <clears throat> and one for the uh, Ecom Success Club and we used uh, smooch.io which was the um, like the support chat features on the sales pages uh, we use Smart Member for the membership sites, um, and they've actually just improved quite a bit recently. And then we used uh, Google Tag Manager. Uh, Chase used that, and then uh, used the uh, heat map tracker. So we were able to track where people, where they were clicking and what they were looking at on the sales pages, just to try to um, optimize the sales pages a little bit. And then we use the GoToWebinar uh, platform as well, like we're on right now, because Webinar Ninja let me down. <laughs> so, guys, I hope you guys got a ton of information on this. I really appreciate you guys for coming out. I just want to know if anybody had any questions about this, what they learned. If they, if there's anything they have, if there's a question box here. Um, go in there, ask a question. If you've got something you want to ask. Someone said here, um, so very interesting, very thoughtful, inf uh, informative, and transparent. I have purchased so, so many products via JVs, uh, members with Chris Chris Record, smart member, blah, blah, blah. I totally missed, I totally missed this launch. Don't have the product. Can you relaunch like in March for me, Laura Davis? Yeah, um, we've, we've considered a relaunch on the Shopify app. Um, there could be, me and Chase are actually working on another really cool software. I can't really divulge it yet what it is, but when it does come out, it's going to be really cool. Uh, we haven't designed the, the total, I mean, we've, we've talked about what the funnel is going to be. It's going to be a similar funnel to what you've seen here, 
um, but uh, we haven't really talked about it. So there's a possibility that we could fit that in the funnel possibly, or if not, we probably offered in the back end. Is a, that's a possible? I'm not. I can't give any guarantees there, but I can tell you that um, it's possible. We've talked about a, a relaunch. Uh, we've talked about um, what do you call it? We've talked about a relaunch. We've talked about uh, it's going to go. It, it, this it's probably my thinking is it's going to go um, into the SaaS model, and then we're just going to kind of move on. So you'll be able to get it there. Right now, though, um, if you're if you if you're still interested in it, um, we can give you a link. Um, I'm, I'm actually, I can actually send you a link. If you, if you send me a private message on Facebook, um, I will definitely send you, I'll let you, I'll definitely send you a link to get in, um, you know, like a backdoor link. It's, the price has definitely jumped up quite a bit. Nothing I can really do about that, but um, we can still get you a good deal. Um, someone else asked a question about Scriptall. Um, Scriptall, you, you probably just look up scriptall.com. Um, I got. I was behind another launch with uh, Justin Burns. He's like a software, or he's a um, he's a copywriter and a funnel guy. And uh, it was called Script Engage. And if you hit me up, I'll send you a link for that as well. Um, that's actually still open. And uh, Script Engage. The difference between Script Engage and um, Script All is Script. They're both phenomenal, by the way. I, I love them both. I own them both. I use them both. Um, but I would say that um, Script and Doll has more features. It's more feature rich. It has like better editing in it, um, and it has a ton, a ton of of, of uh, templates. There's just and there's more and more templates being added. So that's Script Engage. Yes, yeah, Script Engage. Okay. Yeah, Script Engage. So it's a cool product. And also, uh, I had Justin specifically put ecom uh, templates in there for all the ecom people. Someone said, "What is Smooch?" So Chase, you could probably talk about Smooch. Smooch is what we used for the live chat. So if you go to smooch.io, you can see. I don't know. I think it was in. It has a bunch of different ways you can use it. Like if you have, like if, if you built a mobile application, you could use it there as well. But I, uh, I'd never seen anybody do this before. But I, I just saw it and it looked. It was free to use. I was like, that's a plus. Um, and I was able to stick it on my sales page, and I could use it to chat with, because uh, I was already using the Slack platform, so they had an integration where I could just type in through Slack, um, and then it would communicate, um, you know, just like a normal live chat. So it was very, very helpful. I, I recommend live chat. It was very helpful for uh, me, um, to, and Carl helped me in the live chat as well, but we could actually see um, you know how people evaluated the page. Um, if there were any questions, it was just very important just to be there because uh, we, as the creators, we know about the product, and it's hard to put yourself in a, a spot where you don't know about when you're first coming in and seeing it for the first time. So you never know what type of questions are going to going to be there. So it just allows you to really communicate and just provide that extra level of support. Cool, and I I put my uh, my Facebook. Um, page on the uh, in the chat box. So if you guys do want to hit me up on any of that, feel free. Um, also, too, I see someone said any mobile opt-in apps. Um, not sure what you mean, but <clears throat> you probably came in. I, so I I uh, JV broker for a lot of people. I do for Anthony Morrison. I helped him do a lot of a few of his mobile opt-in stuff, and I I did uh, did the openings for those those webinars. If you do remember. Um, but as far as mobile opt-in apps, no, no app there. I'm not sure what that question exactly means, but um, mobile app opt-ins is a pretty cool product. It's just a very unique way for gaining a list, and you can use it for e-com. You can use it for anything, anything list building. It's just a, a very sleek and quick way to build an email list because it just makes it so easy for people that are using mobile. And I, and I talk to um, Anthony every once in a while, and he told, because I'm not really doing it so much for him anymore, but he did tell me that he's upgrading to a, uh, a desktop version. So pretty cool stuff. He's actually getting into a desktop uh, version, so it'll work with desktop and mobile, just so you guys know that do own it. Um, cool, guys. Well, I think this is a wrap. I don't, th I don't really see any other questions here. Um, if you do have a question, just hit us up on Facebook. We're... We're both very uh, transparent, very open people. We're here to help you guys. Ultimately, we have a 
we have a big goal. It's like our big picture is to help as many people as we possibly can. Um, and we're just excited. Like when we see people give testimonials or we see success stories, it really actually truly makes us feel good about what we're doing. And, uh, and the fact that we're helping people in this industry break into this industry like we did. So this is, was our strategy. And uh, guys, thanks for joining. I had a blast. <laughs> I had a blast. Um, Chase, do you have any final words? No, uh, um, I think I think we covered most of everything. And yeah, again, super excited uh, to be able just to share because this was my first launch, um, and I'm very thankful to you, Carl. Just for I mean, it wouldn't definitely wouldn't be possible without you. Um, I would have had a a product and would have been you know taking the long road. So I think it just really worked out. Um, where we were able to do this together and have a successful launch and then be able to share what we've learned and our mistakes and our successes with uh, others so they can uh, you know, just take it and implement it to whatever they're doing. So hopefully you were able to pick up something here in today's training and apply it to your own business. So that's it for me. Okay. Uh, also, th and thank you, Chase, by the way, for first of all, creating a, fan a great product when I first saw it and started playing with it, I knew right away that I wanted to get behind it and back it up. And and I actually reached out to you and said, "Hey, I think uh, I think that I could actually help you with this." And so, thank you for allowing me to help you and uh, be a big part of the success of it. I think it was a very good collaborative effort. Um, I mean, you 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 made the actual you helped me with my job too, make it easy and not. Um, necessarily put all the weight of the of the launch on my shoulders and and also because some of the stuff you knew like you were very uh, you knew software you're kind of like me I'm like a I'm a software nerd but you're even you you know more about software than I do you know more about code than I do so it was a it was a really good partnership in that sense so definitely thank you for that and also for any JVs that are listening or product developers that are listening um, I am a JV broker and. I, that doesn't mean I'm always for hire. Um, I have a very, very busy schedule. Um, I also am building software and stuff like that, so I've got my own stuff going on. Um, I'm also, too, I'm very picky about who I work with. Um, as you guys know, I've worked with Anthony uh, Morrison. Um, I've worked with Chris Record. Um, now I'm working with Chase, who's, who's building a great name for himself in the industry. Um, you know, I've worked with Justin Burns, who's been around in the industry for a while, so I'm very picky with who I work with. Um, I'm also very picky on the product. So if you, maybe it doesn't even if you're someone that hasn't broken in or someone that hasn't been in the industry, um, that's okay. If your product is something like a uh, on the same level of a Shopify app and you feel that way, then yeah, sure, reach out to me, send me some links, share it with me. But there's I have I have rules, and Chase knows I have rules. I have rules in order for us to ever do something like this because I can see I can see why some people fell at this business I've personally failed at this business I've made uh, I've made a lot of mistakes and because of that I've learned a lot of lessons on how to do a launch there's a lot of things that you have to do you have to be ready for at least 30 days prior there has to be no bugs in your software um, you have to have your sales copy done um, not necessarily all of your sales pages don't need to be done but the software needs to be done the um, the funnels and stuff like that all that stuff has to be predetermined before or um, or even a strategy like uh, with me so if you have a good product we could strategize and then put out some dates and get certain things done and then put out a launch date and then yeah that could possibly work but again I'm very I'm very picky and also I've got rules so just to let you guys know but other than that I appreciate everybody everybody on the call I mean we've got a few people on here we're gonna have the replay up uh, as soon as we can it'll be on the school of and uh, you guys will have access to there and then chase will have access to so you know wherever he decides to share it and then uh, from there uh, we're good and golden I, I again I, I thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you guys soon on another training call